everybody. Welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to tear into the engine here from our 1948 8N and see what's going on inside it. Uh, if you remember, you go way back to the first video when we first got this thing, it was it was, it was kind of stuck, you know, it had a bunch of stuck valves and um, the, the pistons were pretty bunged up with rust and stuff. We managed to get it turning. We finally ended up managing to, to get it to run and drive. But, I, I mean, because I wasn't too sure what was going to happen, I reused the head gasket and and I, I would like to get that replaced at, at least. I'll, I'll, you know, I'm kind of comfortable with that. But it but it, it, it's just, you know, it's so easy to change. We'll change it. And I want to get the pistons out of it and make sure it hasn't got any stuck rings because it was pumping a little bit of oil and one cylinder... The compression was kind of low so we'll have a look at that if um, uh, the rings look okay we'll just go right to giving it a fast hone and re-ringing it just to make sure and we'll also we'll pull the crankshaft out have a look at the, the bottom end see what the rod bearings and stuff look like there there's no sense putting it back together with you know crap in it So first things first, I'm going to get um, the water pump and the side covers off. I can't remember if this thing has an adjustable valve train in it or not. Well, I got uh, the head all loosened off. Uh, thankfully, most of the studs came out. There's still a few behind. We'll get them out after. But you can see there it's loose, so I'll just lift it off and we'll see what we see inside. So there it is. It's a little rusty in there, but I don't think it's all that bad. We'll find out when we get the pistons out. Right now I'm going to use my stud puller and get the rest of these studs out. All the studs are out. You can see in here it does not have an adjustable valve train. So uh, we'll, we'll see what kind of condition that's in. There's bolts all the way down each side of the oil pan. And don't forget there's two in the front uh, under there. And then we'll just whack it with something to loosen up the gasket and it should come right off. We've got the pan off now. It's not really all that bad in there. So what we'll do is we'll get, um, I've got the crank turn. So number one and number four at bottom dead center. We'll get these two out. Um, once they're out, we'll mark them. So we know they go back in the same place. Um, and then we'll get two and three out. So here's the piston and rod from number four. Uh, it looks to me like somebody has had their hands in this engine at some point. It's got four ring pistons in it. I'm pretty sure it came with three ring pistons. Um, but what I can tell, I remember I told you it had one cylinder with low compression. I remember now it's number four. And this here, this top compression ring is stuck. The second compression ring is stuck. And the oil ring is stuck. So we'll have to free these rings up. And then this should be good to go again. I've got down to the last one here, number two. The bearing and everything looked fine, but it's loose. So what we've got here is a wrong size bearing. So we've probably got a, a, a 10 under throw and a standard bearing or a 20 under throw and a 10 under bearing. We'll find out when we measure everything. But that's nice to know that, you know, we don't need a crankshaft. Might just have to buy one set of shells. And on the other three pistons, the rings are free. Everything looks good there. Now I'll remove this big bolt and we'll get the crank pulley off. It's easier to wait till you've got the pan off because sometimes they're stuck on there and you need to get at the back of them here to, to knock them off. The, the Right here, they're pretty flimsy. I've damaged them before trying to get them off. Well, too late. I wrecked the pulley. Man, that thing is on there good. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and take the crankshaft out. Maybe I can uh, uh, get it off when the crank is out. The, um, the fasteners on here were torqued and then safety wired. I've taken all the safety wire off. The number one main has the oil pump integral to it. So that'll be another job. We'll have to open the oil pump up, make sure it's okay. Here's our main caps off. You can see the bearings all look good on them. You don't have to worry about marking these because all three of them are unique. The front one, of course, has the oil pump. The one with the thrust bearing is the center one. 
and the rear one is the rear one. Well, I guess if you're going to take the bearings off, you, you might be able to get them mixed up, but um, I think probably when I clean them, you'll find they're stamped anyway. But I'm not going to disturb them much, so they're okay like that. When you pull the timing cover off, watch out for this spring and plunger. That's your oil pressure relief valve. It hides behind that big plug there. We'll take that out after. Now we'll have some fun and try to get the valve train out of this. In theory, you should be able to reach in and push the valve guide down and pull this little clip out and the whole cartridge comes out the top, but uh, that seldom happens. They're usually stuck in there pretty good, but we'll find out. So here you can see one that moves. You see, you push it down and then you pull that little clip out and your cartridge will come out the top. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to get one out if it's stuck like this one. First thing that makes the job real handy is a valve lifter. These things are four Ford flathead engines and you can buy them on eBay usually for a couple of bucks. This one was made by, I can't quite read it, but there's, there's lots of these around. Um, so it gets in there like that. And you literally lift the valve. And when the valve is lifted, you smack the head of it with a hammer and it'll release the keepers. Once the keepers are released, don't worry about it. See, they just fall down in there. You won't lose them. You pull your valve out. Then you just get in there with a screwdriver and you work the valve spring out. So you'll have to pop it out of there like that. You'll get the keeper, or the, pardon me, the retainer. And then you, you just work very gently so you don't wreck the valve spring and get the valve spring out of there. Oh, well, first thing we see on this one is a broken valve spring. We'll have to replace that. Then once you've got the valve spring out of the way, I use a half inch impact socket. It's exactly the right size. And you just drive the valve guide down with a hammer. You have to make sure that the, the cam is on the base circle and it'll give you just enough room to get the, the guide out of there. And out it comes. We removed the four bolts and took the camshaft gear off. There's a, there's a locking plate um, with tabs that fold up on one side of the bolt. So you knock that down, then take the bolt out. Then a camshaft just slides out the front. There is a lot of filthy grossness in this engine, isn't there? Ugh. So now we need to get everything cleaned up. So we'll take this thing outside tomorrow and uh, get it sprayed down with oven cleaner again and get all of this uh, grossness cleaned out of it. We'll get the oil pan cleaned out. Uh, a lot of the smaller parts will just go in the solvent tank to get cleaned up. And then we can uh, inspect everything. Wow, man, what a job getting that crank pulley off. That's the tightest one I've ever had to get off. And <laughs> I ran out of acetylene just as I got it moving. So, uh, wow, that was pretty close. I polished up the journals on the crankshaft and started measuring stuff. So it turns out the, the mains are like two thou under. That's a, a new one on me. Anyway, you can see there, there's the bearings. 002, two thou under. I mistakenly, when I was taking it apart, I just saw the two and automatically assumed 20. But they're, uh, no, two thou under, so that's okay. And the throws, uh, nominal on the throws is 2.095, and these are all 2.085. That one's a tiny bit under. I marked it down as 2.084. So the throws are 10 under. So we're going to, um, one by one, put the caps on these and torque them down and measure them. Because uh, remember, number two was kind of loose. So we'll check that out and see what we got. Now we're going to check our connecting rods. I've checked these three already. We're going to check this one. So first thing we're going to do is clamp it in the vise. And we're going to clamp it by the, by the big end, not by the beam. 
And for just for the sake of keeping track, I've marked the, the shells top and bottom. These are number four top and bottom. So we're going to put the cap on. Now with these things, they always go um, key to key. The keys always go on the same side. I've not really ever seen any that were any different. Now we're going to torque them to 30 foot pounds. And that's why we hold it by the big end. You see, if you're holding it by the beam, they're pretty spindly rods. You could actually twist it. And we don't want to do that. There we go. Now we're going to loosen it from the vise and clamp it by the beam so we can measure the big end. So first thing we're going to do is use an inside mic to measure the finished bore of the big end of the rod. Now, rather than um, reading the inside mic, I don't like taking numbers from two different mics. I'm, I'm looking for a comparative number, so um, I use this almost as a snap gauge. I put it in there, get the size, and I measure it then with the same mic that I use to measure the, the pin on the crank. Just my way of doing it. Factory spec for the big end of the rod is 2.220 inches. And you can see there, that's exactly what we've got. 2.220. Now we'll, um, we'll lower the rod back down, grab it by the big end again, and we'll take the nuts off, put the shells back in, and measure the inside diameter of the shells. So you can see here from reading the mic we've got on the, it's hard to explain, I haven't got enough hands, but don't worry about the numbers on the dial, worry about the numbers on the barrel. It's not quite, you can see a zero, but it hasn't quite exposed the one. So that means uh, it's a two to three mic. So two inches plus 75 thousandths plus on the tumbler we've got 22. So 75 and 22 is 97. So we've got two inches and 97 thousandths, which is good uh, for standard. Unfortunately, our crank is 10 under. So you can see the problem we have here. So even though I could really feel the movement on number two here when it was all together, they're actually all got standard bearings in them. And all the pins on our crankshaft are 10 under. So now we have a conundrum. Um, I'm going to look around here and see if I've got a set of 10 under rod bearings or if I've got um, a set of standard main bearings and maybe I've got another crankshaft that's standard, standard. I mean, worst case scenario, we just have to buy a set of um, 10 under rod bearings and we can just put them in there and put it together and it'll be fine. Uh, let me have a look around. Okay, so... I found this other crankshaft up on the shelf. Um, this one has got, uh, let me see, the one that we had first, it had uh, two, two thousandths under mains and standard, or, or sorry, 10 under rods, but we had um, standard rod bearings and I don't have any around here. This crank is, um, 10 under on the mains and 20 under on the throws and I have a complete set of bearings for it. So we'll just use this crank. It just needs cleaning up. So I will put um, this one away and we'll save it for a rainy day. Well, the fun never ends. I don't know if these guys are drinking when they put these engines together or they just use whatever crap they've got lying around. This crank and the set of bearings came out of another old engine I took apart. It, it had hardly been run at all. It had new sleeves and, and, and everything in it. Um, this one had the, the, the bearings anyway were uh, 10 under mains and 20 under rod bearings. I actually measure it. It turns out, yeah, the crank is 10 under, but the throws are 30 under. Uh, I don't understand this. So uh, I've got one more crank up there, but it's standard standard and I've only got a set of standard rod bearings I don't have any standard mains So uh, I've got these three cranks and a bunch of bearings and I haven't got uh, What I need to put one crank in it, you, you can't make this stuff up Anyway, I got to look now and see what I can order See who's got what in stock and we'll go from there I've got all the hardware for our engine cleaned up and I've also gone ahead 
and ordered a set of rod bearings so we can use one of those three cranks that we were well what a disaster that was eh? anyway got that all sorted out so i'm waiting on some rod bearings to come and we'll be able to use uh the crank i'm going to use the one that is uh i think it's 10 on the mains and 30 on the throws that's the one we're going to use um, i also have to power wash the inside of the block out but we're back under the grip of the polar vortex so for a couple of days uh, my power washer will be down and out. So uh, in the meantime, we're going to get some of these miscellaneous engine parts cleaned up and get a coat of paint on them. Now I'm cleaning up the valves. And I basically, I just put them in my old cordless drill here. And run them against the buffing wheel. That cleans them up. Whoops. I usually have two hands when I'm doing this. But you get the idea. Nice and clean. There's all our valve train stuff cleaned up and uh, ready for when we start assembling the engine. We'll, we'll decide what we're going to do with that. We'll see if they need to just be lapped in. It depends what the seats look like or if we have to do an actual valve job. And um, this one here, if you remember when we took it apart, we had one broken valve spring. Uh, I replaced it with one out of my, you know, uh, horde of end parts. Now we're going to have a fast look at our oil pump. You'll notice that it is built into the number one main cap. So if the inside of this gets chewed up, uh, your choices are live with it or replace the main cap, which will necessitate having the engine block um, line board at the machine shop. So these bolts are safety wired, so we're just going to go ahead and cut the wire. And then we'll get the little bolts out. And we'll see what's in there. Another thing we want to check is the pickup tube is brazed into it. You just want to make sure that that looks okay. They, they, they will occasionally um, break off or start leaking and sucking air and cause an oil pressure problem. So you can see here that it wobbles, that's the, that's the bushing. Um, this is driven off the crank gear that drives the, that drives the, the camshaft and it, it always puts kind of a side load on it that way. You can see that it, the bushing's worn enough that the, the, the rotor gear has been contacting the inside of the cover. I'm not really sure that there's a ton we can do about that. Um, there is a little kit you can buy. It comes with a new bushing and a reamer and everything. Uh, so you can repair this. But um, I had this thing running and the oil pressure was uh, decent enough. So we'll just uh, check it over a little further and make sure it's not all scored up like the inside of the case here. And I think we'll probably just let it be. So here's a little cheater trick. Put it back together without the gasket. And it, it uh, just make sure it turns still. And this one still turns just fine. So um, taking out the gasket just kind of takes a little of the clearance away. It's taken away a lot of the wobble on this. So it'll give it a little more life. I've gone ahead and packed all the cavities in the oil pump with axle grease. That kind of primes it. It'll, the axle grease is really heavy and it'll get in between those gears and and really let the thing get some suction going when it first starts turning to um, pull the oil out of the pan. Now I went, I put a little anaerobic sealer around the cover and we'll put that on and tighten up the bolts and put our safety wire back. Now we're going to have a go at freeing up our stuck rings on number four here. So we're just going to slowly start heating up the piston with some uh, map gas here. And then we'll slowly uh, see if we can get the, get the ring uh, worked out. you got to be really careful because they're really brittle. And like I said, if it breaks, it breaks. doesn't matter. Uh, we'll just put a different set. i got another set of pistons over in the shed. But I'd rather just reuse these because there's nothing wrong with them.
Just gotta go slow and be patient. Patience was never my thing. I broke it. So I guess we'll be putting a set of pistons and rings in it. I found the solution to our piston ring dilemma. I, I looked online and I found out I can buy rings for one cylinder for like cheap 17 bucks or something. So I did that. Um, it, it should be here in a couple of days. Well, I wait for a little bit nicer weather tomorrow so we can power wash uh, the inside of this block. I spent a little time and just kind of got my sanding block. I cleaned up the deck a little bit. And I put some different wire brushes in my drill and got the, the, the valve recesses and the, the bowls and stuff cleaned up. Um, the only real nasty thing I found was the number four exhaust valve. The seat is pretty grim. But I just touched it with an old school uh, seat cutter and I, I think we should be able to work with it. She's pitted up pretty badly. I fooled around with this and I got that um, cleaned up pretty nicely. Yeah, I'm getting a good pattern on the valve now so um, that I guess I'll do it for now uh, until I get this thing cleaned up tomorrow and then we can um, get it painted and we'll start putting it together. I'm trying to avoid doing a full valve job on this thing. I don't really think it needs it. We'll just kind of touch them up and lap them in and we should be good to go. Well, the polar vortex has finally left us. So I can get this engine block outside and get it the inside of it power washed. Uh, an important note, before you go power washing or cleaning these engine blocks, Get the oil gallery plugs out. There's one at the front and one at the back. Uh, you can see the rear one here. They're right beside the cam gallery. That's the, that's how the the um, the cam bearings get looped. And we got to make sure we blast this out. So there's a little uh, one eight pipe plug in the back, and you can see there another in the front. Now these are old school. You take them out with a slotted screwdriver. So. Um, Hopefully you can get a good a good whack at them. I just warmed up the bosses with the old map gas here and they came right out. Let's get this thing clean. Now that everything is clean here, we're gonna knock out the upper retainer for the rear main seal and we'll get that all cleaned up and put back in. It's just kind of an interference fit. You just kind of tap it out with a hammer. But you can see there, I forgot to take this out before I power wash it. So we'll get that all in there all cleaned up, get this part all cleaned up, and I'll show you how to put it back in. Well, I guess that'll do it for this one. We've got our engine completely apart. We've got everything cleaned and inspected. We know what we need to do. Um, we've ordered the parts that we need, so while I wait for the parts to come, we'll uh, move on to other things. I'll just be um, cleaning up some parts and getting them painted so that when I get to the other steps of the restoration of the tractor, um, I don't have to wait so long for everything. So anyway, that'll do it for this one, I guess. And uh, we'll see you next time on the Claremont Classic Garage. Until then, thanks for tuning in and so long.